In this video, I'm going to look at how the enthalpy change of combustion, so that's delta HC, how that can be determined using the method of calorimetry. So I've got a spirit burner here that's got some propane one all in and it's burning away there, it's combusting, it's reacting with the oxygen in the air. And the calorimetry method can actually be used to determine a value for the enthalpy change of combustion for this reaction. We've got the equation there for the enthalpy change of combustion. Remember, this is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance reacts completely with oxygen under standard conditions. So we've got the proton one all reacting with 9 over 2 moles of O2, producing 3 CO2s and 4 H2Os. So if you can imagine the apparatus that would be used to do this, it's similar to the apparatus I used in the other video for calorimetry. So we've got an insulated um, beaker, so this could be a glass beaker or it could be a, a metal can. We've got a lid on to minimise any heat loss from the, the, um, the beaker. And inside the beaker we've got a known volume of water and we're going to be using the density to calculate the mass of this and obviously a thermometer so we can record the temperature change. And underneath we've got our spirit burner with our propan one all in. So let's imagine the temperature of the water has been recorded before the, the proton one all has been lit and it's at 22 degrees Celsius. We would also need to record the mass of the, the spirit burner. So the starting mass we're going to say is 162.0 grams. We've lit the burner now and what it's going to do obviously it's going to heat this water up and the mass will obviously drop as the fuel is converted to carbon dioxide and water. So I've blown the, uh, the flame out, <laughs> well I've just really rubbed it out of course. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the mass of the spirit burner and I'm going to look at the maximum temperature that the thermometer reached. The maximum temperature was 67 degrees C and the mass of the burner after we'd blown out the flame was 160.5 grams and that gives us a temperature rise of 45 degrees C and the mass of propan one all that had reacted is obviously the difference and that's going to be 1.50 grams. So remember step one is the Q equals MC delta T step. So we're finding out the energy that's been transferred to heat up the 250 centimetres cubed of water by 45 degrees C. I'm taking the density of water to be one gram per centimetre cube. So the mass of the water is 250 grams. The specific heat capacity I'm using as 4.18 and obviously the temperature rise is 45. So that gives us a Q value of 47,025 joules. Before I do step two, I've just calculated from the mass of fuel burnt, remember there was 1.5 grams of proton one all burnt, I've converted that to moles by dividing the mass by the MR. So 1.5 divided by 60 comes out at 0 0.025 moles. So that many joules has been produced from that many moles of proton one all. So in step two, we convert that to kilojoules per mole by dividing the Q by the moles. And there are the numbers. So we've got minus, remember exothermic, minus 47,025 joules. And we're dividing that by 0 0.025 moles and I've converted that to kilojoules per mole and it comes out at 1,881 kilojoules per mole. So our delta H for the reaction, the enthalpy change of combustion 
is coming out at minus 1881 kilojoules per mole. What we're going to do now is we're going to compare our value. Remember we got minus 1881 kilojoules per mole. So we're going to compare our recorded value from our experimental cal calorimetry method. We're going to compare that with the data book value, which you can see I've written up there. The data book value for the, the standard enthalpy change of combustion is minus 2021 kilojoules per mole. So what could be causing the difference? The main source of er error is going to be the heat lost in our experiment. So no matter how, how well we insulate the beaker, there will always be some heat loss to the surroundings. And so not all of the energy from the reaction is going to be transferred into the water. Another possible reason could be that we didn't get complete combustion. So there's a chance that we had incomplete combustion taking place and that has a different chemical equation associated with it and so therefore it could explain why our value is different to the data value. And of course another possible explanation could be that the experiment that we carried out wasn't done under standard conditions. The data book values are all measured under standard conditions of 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals of pressure. If I just have a look at the thermometer and I can see that the temperature is not at 25 degrees C and so therefore that will definitely affect the value that we calculate.